Good morning. Today we will discuss about array. Array is known as a data structure. We can say that array is a data structure. It is also known as a linear data structure. It is used to store the multiple values of the same type. It is also known as a homogeneous data structure. What is homogeneous data structure? Homogeneous means it will store multiple values of the same type. For example, if you want to declare an array, then you can write integer type, for example, then you can write a of 5. It means it will create the 5 copy of a, right? So, but all this copy of A will be of the same type that is integer and that is the reason why it is known as a homogeneous data type. Homogeneous means collection of the same type of value. For example, if you are says that I want to create an array of character C of 5, then it will store the character, 5 character, but it will not store other data type over here. Suppose if you say that I want to store a float f of 5, then it will store floating point value of float point value of a 5 array. So multiple, you can say that the 5 value will be stored. But sometimes we people think that, sir, why array? Why I need an array? So I have a wonderful example for you guys. For example, suppose if my integer a is equal to, I have value 10. Now I am writing immediately a equal to 20. And now suppose if I am trying to print the value of a, that is percentage d and a, then what happened? It will not print 10, but it will print 20. What if I want to store every data? Right now what happened? Uh, a variable can store only one value at the same time. So, it will store only latest value, one value at the same time. So, it will store only latest value. This type of variable, that is, uh, you can say that the this is the variable can store only one value. So, variable which can store only one value, this type of variable is known as a scalar variable. What is a scalar variable? The normal variable, regular variable, which can store only one value at the same time. Suppose if you are writing a equal to 10 and then you are writing a equal to 20, then your 10 will be replaced with the 20 and whenever you print this, you will get the 20 only, your 10 will be lost. Right. But if you think that, sir, I don't want to lost my previous value, I want to store my each and every value, then what we can do? So at that particular time, you can go for array. Array is what? Array is a linear data structure. You can say it is a collection of multiple values, but with the same data type because suppose if you are writing integer a of 5 then you can store 5 value definitely you can store 5 value but you can store 5 value of integer only suppose if you want to store floating point value then you can write float f of 5 here you can store only floating point it means it is a homogeneous data structure homogeneous data structure means the collection which can store the data of the same type only that is the concept of array one more thing about the array is what suppose if you are <coughs> declaring integer for example variable arr of 10 then what is the value and where it will be stored so it interesting thing about the array is what whenever you write arr of 10 it will create the 10 variables so now it is not one variable, it will be 10 variables. So how we can access each and every variable? So index, using index, you can access the variable. For example, if you want to access the first value, then you can write ARR of 0. So whenever you write ARR of 0, it will point to the first element of array. Suppose if you are writing 
ARR of 1, then it will point to the second element of array. So the concept is what? If your size is 10, then it will store the index up to n minus 1. For example, this is n, n equal to 10, then the value will be stored up to n minus 1. It means if it is a 10, then it will store up to 0 to 9. So what we can say here, that is it will store up to ARR of 9. And ARR of 9 will store the value of 10th element. So if you look carefully over here, that for example, if this is a 5 array, then the index will be, that will be from 0 to 4. If this is a 5 array, 5 value, then the index will be from 0 to 4. Array index always starts from 0. Suppose if you are writing ARR of 10, then the value will be stored up to 0 to 9. So we can say that the array range is what? So range of array value will be is equal to that will be from 0 to size minus 1. Suppose if your size is 10, then it will be from 0 to 9. So you can store the value up to 0 to 9. One of the ultimate thing about the array is what? Definitely array is a linear data structure. Array is a homogeneous data structure. It can store the multiple values of the same type only. This, this normal variable is known as a scalar variable. As well as array has a wonderful thing is what? Array is also known as a contiguous memory allocation. Now what is contiguous? Contiguous memory data structure. What is contiguous memory? Contiguous memory means suppose this is the integer, right? And suppose integer occupies a 2 bytes. Suppose integer occupies 2 bytes. Then your first variable will be stored at, for example, A0, right? The first allocation of the memory will be the random. For example, if A0 is available at the address 2020, then the size of integer is 2 byte. So what is the biggest advantage? The next element, that will be the A of 1, will be available at the 2022. Why? Because the size of integer is, suppose if it is a 2 byte, then your next element available at the 2022. And next element will be available at the 2024. So address, memory allocation is contiguous. In array, suppose if you got the first element, then definitely you can access all the elements available in the array. I want to show you the same thing practically. So let's see practically how array we can develop, how we can use the array that I want to demonstrate in a C language. For example, I have a normal variable that is a is equal to 10. You can say this variable is a scalar variable. Why? Because whenever you print this, definitely you can access the value that will be 10. But if somebody change this, right, then you will be, you will not be able to access the previous value of this variable. So it will print only 20. But what if I want to access all the values stored in my variable? Suppose if you want to access all the values, then you can take the array and you can store each and every value. So let me give you example of simple array. For example, I have integer array 1, for example, of I have the value that is a 5 value is equal to, suppose if you want to initialize array, then you can initialize the array with the curly braces. So the interesting thing is what? We can use the curly braces and we can store the value over here. For example, the value is 12, 34, 54, 56, and 67. So, this my array variable, that is you can say ARR, right? 
I don't want to declare here ARR1, I want to declare simple ARR. So this is my ARR variable of 5 having the 5 values. Now I want to show you guys that this is the contagious memory allocation. Why array is the homogeneous? Because it stores each and every value of the same data type. It means it is an array of integer, then it will store the value of integer only. Now, how I can access each and every value? I, as I mentioned earlier, suppose if you want to access the first element of array, then you can write percentage D and you can access ARR of 0. So, suppose if you write ARR of 0, then you will be able to access the first element and it is 12, right? But I want the address also. So, the value is equal to percentage D and I want to check the address. Dear students, whenever you want to access the address at that particular time, you can use percentage U, right? So, you can access the address using percentage U. Now, I want the address of this array, then you can simply write comma. Whenever you want the address, you can write M percent ARR of 0. So, now you people will be able to see that there are value and address. See, value is equal to 12 and address is equal to 6356716. Now, this is the integer data type. So, you first need to know what is the size of integer data type. So, you can just get the size of integer, right? And here you can print that size of integer is equal to how many bytes? <clears throat> so, size of integer is 4 bytes. Dear students, what is the biggest advantage? See carefully. See, integer size is 4 bytes, right? And address is 6356716. So, my next element 34 will be available at the 6356720. Why? Because it is a contagious memory allocation. And as it is the contagious memory allocation, the next address will be available. The next value will be available at the next address. And next address will be the gap between the first address and second address will be the size of the data type and the size of the data type is 4 bytes. So, my next value, for example, suppose if you print this, then you will get the proper idea. For example, this is the first, this is the second, third, fourth and fifth. I want to print each and every value. Suppose if you want to print each and every value, then you will be able to see that this is the array 1, array 2, array 3 and array 4. Whatever we discussed on the paper, that is what array is the variable which store the value in a range from 0 to n minus 1. n is 5, so your value will be stored up to 0 to 4. And that is the reason why I am writing here ARR up to 4. Now, if you see, if you look at the output carefully, then you will be able to see that. Let me use this lesson over here. So, you people will be able to get the proper idea about this. Yes. See, size of the integer is 4 bytes. Suppose if you want to access the first element, then you can write ARR of 0. If you want to access the second element, then you can write ARR of 1. If you want to access the third element, then you can write ARR of 2. Up to the size of array, you can access. Right. So, I am able to access each and every value. But if you look carefully at the address, See, the first address is 16, then the next address will be automatically 20, then 24, then 28, and then 32. So, what is the wonderful thing about this? The wonderful thing is, suppose if you get the address of the first variable, then you will be able to access each and every value of the array. Why? Because it is known as a contagious memory allocation. Suppose if you think that, sir, I want to learn the array with real-time example. Is uh, any real-time example of array is available with you? Yes, I have. For example, what I want to do, I want to calculate. I want to calculate.
calculate average run scored by average run scored by Virat Kohli. Right. So I want to calculate the average run scored by Virat Kohli. So uh, what what is the average of Virat Kohli? For example, if you have 10 innings, right, if you have 10 innings, then I want to calculate the average of 10 innings. So how we can write the simple program without array? We can simply write this particular program and we can calculate the uh, average as well as we can calculate the total runs scored by Virat Kohli. Easily we can do this. How we can do this? Let me show you practically. For example, let me save this particular program as demo 26. So you people will be able to get the proper idea. See, I am declaring here variable that is integer score. Then I am declaring the variable that is integer n. So how many innings are there? I am declaring the variable that is the total score. So it will be total, right? And I want to calculate the float average. So what is the average of Virat Kohli of particular inning? So I'm just asking to the user that enter how many innings played by Virat Kohli. Because whenever you want to calculate the average, definitely you need the number of innings. So how many innings were there, right? So I'm just asking to the user percent is D and percent N. So how many innings played by the Virat Kohli? Now you can ask to the user for 10 innings data if N equal to 10. So I'm writing here I equal to that is 0, I less than N, I plus plus. So what happens see if my N is 10 then this loop will run up to 10 times. Definitely I need to declare the variable I over here. Now what I will do, I will simply ask for the score. So I am asking for the score, enter the score that is scored by Virat Kohli. So enter the number of runs, you, you can say what is the score of Virat Kohli in the first inning, then the second inning, then the third inning, then the fourth inning and then you can ask for the score. Here also you can display enter the score of that is percentage D inning, right? So what is the percentage D value? Percentage D value will be 0. So I'm writing here I plus 1. So what happened? See, uh, it will asking me for the first inning, second inning, third inning, fourth inning, five inning, if my N is equal to 5. Now what I'm doing? Total plus is equal to score. So whatever the score is that I'm adding with the total, variable and as well as once I am getting the total at the last I am simply printing that is what is the, the average of Virat Kohli. So I am writing here average is equal to percentage point 2f. So I want it in a floating point. So what we can do over here that is total divided by number of innings. Right. So if the number of inning is 5, then I want the average of 5 inning. You can simply run this particular program and you will be able to get the proper idea what I will see. There are no array variable is declared over here. But if I say that the how many innings played by Virat Kohli, then 5 innings. Enter the score of the first inning. Virat Kohli did 20 runs in the first inning. He did 30 runs in the second inning. He did 40 runs in the third inning. He did 100 runs in the fourth inning. And he did 5 runs in the fifth inning. Now what is the total and what is the average? Right. So I need average and total both. What happened in this particular case? You just need to initialize the variable. So you need to write total equal to 0. Why? Because we are adding the score to total variable and I want to print the total also. So I am writing here total is equal to percentage D and you can print the total run scored by. So total runs 
here we have already an average variable so what we can do average is equal to total total divided by n right so whenever you write total divided by n here you can display that is average variable why it is not giving me output because it is the floating point variable that i am displaying and total and n both are the integral data type right so i am not able to access the same and that is the reason why it is showing me 0.0, .0. now what i can see how many inning five inning first inning 20 second inning 30 third inning 40 fourth inning 100 fifth inning five runs now you people will be able to calculate that the total run scored by Virat Kohli is 195 and the average is 39. But after this average and run, what if I want the score of each inning? If you want to display the score of each inning, then what happens students, please see carefully. If you print here, percentage D and if you print that the score is equal to percentage D and if you print the score variable you will be surprised but what happened with the scalar variable it store only last value so if you write here that is in first inning 20 third inning 30 third inning 40 400 in fourth inning and 500 in fifth inning average is 39 but the score is equal to 5 why score is equal to 5? Because it stores only one value at the same time. Now what if I create an array of score? If you have an array of score, then you can store all this value in the array. So how we can store this in array? Very simple. You can convert this particular code you can convert this particular code into array. So let me save this particular code. That is demo 27. Now, whenever you want to convert this into array, you can just write over here that is integer score. Now, how many innings that you can specify over here? Right. So I'm writing here that is the inning is for example 10. Right. Now you can write the maximum value over here for example i am writing that the score of 1000 inning but what is the amazing thing amazing thing is the total length is 1000 but if you store up to n then that particular value will be stored the rest will be empty right so here you can define the maximum size for example score of 100 so i want to store the run of 100 inning but how many Virat Kohli played? For example, 5. Now, how we can store this particular value? So, you can write here score of i. So, what is i? i is your index. So, score of 0, score of 1, score of 2, score of 3, up to n. So, if your n is 5, then it will store up to 0 to 4. If your n is 10, then it will store up to 0 to 9 so this is the wonderful thing that you can do and you can add the score of i with the total right so this, your score of i will be added to the total and as a result what is the wonderful thing each and every score you have so at last you can print that Virat Kohli played this much of innings uh, this many innings and this is the score of each inning and this is the average and total of Virat Kohli. That is the wonderful thing with the array. For example, if you want to print this, then you can write i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus, and I want to just print that score of each inning. So I will just print the score of each inning percentage d and score of i. Right? So whenever you print this, you will be able to see that now you are able to access each and every innings score. See, it is asking me how many innings played by Virat Kohli. Suppose if I say 5, now what happens? See, my n is 5, so 0 to 5, it means 0 to 4, and my score is the array variable. So, what happens if I enter the score of first inning, that is, for example, 20, 30. 
40, 100 and 5. Now what is the biggest advantage? I can access the each and every inning score. That is 20, 30, 40, 100 and 5. And the total run is equal to 195. And the average is equal to 39. So this is the wonderful thing about the array. Let me clear on the paper same thing. See, what is array? Simple. Array is the linear data structure. Contiguous memory allocation. So each and every value will be stored at the address with the specified uh, that is, you can say, if in, if you are creating an array of integer and the integer is occupying four bytes, then each and every value stored at the different address will be of the four bytes. This is what we discussed in the demo, that is 26. For example, let me open the demo 25. So, see this is the demo 25. What we discussed in this particular example, array of 5 means I am storing the value of 5, right? So, it is a simple, you can say, this is the simple direct initialization. So, I am not asking to the user for this particular value. I am storing 5 value over here. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the size of integer is what? Size of integer is 4 byte and that is the reason why... I am able to access that the first address is available at the 16 and the second address is available at the 20. Third address is available at the 24. Why this gap is of 4 bytes? Because the size of integer is 4 byte. Students, I have the wonderful example of this also. For example, let me save this program demo 28. Suppose instead of integer array, Suppose instead of integer array, you have an array of character and that is character C of 5 is equal to, now I am writing here character that is capital A, capital T, capital M, capital I, capital Y and capital A. So I am storing Atmir, right? This is the array of 6 characters. So I am writing here array of Six. Now see, instead of size of integer, I am just printing here size of character. So we will not print the size of integer, we will print the size of character. You can access the character using percentage C. So I am writing here percentage C. I don't want the array of correct integer. So I am simply writing here character ARR of 6 is equal to. So I can access each and every value. So now whenever you access array of that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 for example. Why up to 5? Because this array is of size 6. So whenever you build and run, now you people will be able to get the idea that size of character is 1 byte. So A is stored at 30, the next will be at the 31, 32, 33, 34 and 35. So this all address are contiguous in the memory allocation. And this address size is depend upon the size of the data type. So the size of the character is one byte. So I can access each and every at the one byte. This is an example of character. But suppose if you think that sir I want to store the value of that is float. Then what is the thing that going on? So let me write here demo 29. Suppose instead of character. If you are creating an array of float. Now students you will get the proper idea that suppose if I am writing 5 then I am accessing up to 0 to 4. And suppose if I am writing 6 then I am accessing up to 0 to 5. It means the index is starting from 0 and it works up to n minus 1. That is the first point to remember about array. Second is this is my data type is float so I cannot store here character. I can store here floating point value for example 3.14. 2.15, 5.54, 3.00 and 5.25. So there are 5 values, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 values that I am storing over here. Now I am printing here that is the size of float. So definitely a size of float will be the in number of byte it will display. 
but whatever the size of float and I want to display only 0.2 so the size of float will be affecting my address so what is the biggest advantage that the gap between each and every address what is the biggest advantage that is the gap between each and every address that is dependent upon the size of the float right so size of the I need to print here not character float so size of the float is 4 bytes so first is stored at the 16 then second is the 20 24 28 and 32 and you can access each and every floating point variable over here one of the good thing about this is what for example suppose if you have your demo 28 suppose if you think that sir i don't want to store character one by one can i store a string yes you can instead of square bracket you can directly write in a double quote and in a double quote you can write that is atmir right so suppose if you are writing like this now you will be able to access the same thing and you will be able to get the idea that the size of the character it means the string is known as an array of character string is known as a array of character so suppose if you are writing it in a double quote then it is treated as an array of character and you can access each and every value now suppose if you think that sir i want to reduce the number of line of the code can i yes you can how see this is the repetition thing that percentage c percentage u percentage c percentage u percentage c percentage u this is the repeated thing so you can write this particular thing in a loop you can write for i equal to zero i less than now what is the size of array size of array is six so you can write i less than six i plus plus now what is the biggest advantage instead of arr of zero you can write arr of i so whenever you write arr of i it will access the respective element it means arr of i means arr of zero then arr of uh, one then arr of two then arr of three then arr of four so definitely i need to declare the variable integer i so whenever you run this now you people will be able to get the idea that sir is doing what very simple the number of times the value is available that is the length of the array that you can access each and every value as well as you can access each and every value address and one of the best thing about the array is what you can access it in reverse also for example if you write i equal to 6 and suppose if you think that i equal to 5 and suppose if you are writing i greater than or equal to 0 i minus minus right then you can get your string in a reverse way that is a t m i y a it is printed in a reverse so one of the biggest thing about the array is what this is the demo number 29 about the float you can convert this particular code into loop how simple you already discussed index is integer so you can write integer i for i equal to 0 i less than 5 why i less than 5 because the size of array is 5 so i'm writing i less than 5 and here instead of array of 0 you can write array of i so your i will be incremented every time and you can access each and every value so you, your each and every value will be accessed over here and what we did over here that is we printed in a reverse order same way you can do over here i equal to 5 i greater than or equal 0 i minus minus and now whenever you run this you people will be able to see that the i am accessing the element in a reverse but what happens see there are five elements so you cannot start from five you can start from four so you can write 4 to 0 and in reverse you can access the value see 5.25 3.0 5.54 2.15 and 3.15 so you can access the array in a forward direction you can access the array in a reverse direction 
and as well as suppose if you think that I don't want to access the array that is in a reverse or forward, I want to access the specific element, then you can write ARR of 2, then directly you will be able to access the second index. It means you will be able to access the third element and third element in this array is that is 5.54. So you can access directly any element, directly any element by specifying index. You can access each and every element using array, using loop. Even you can access each and every element in a reverse direction as well as in a forward direction. And any data type you can access.